Hi everybody, my name is Kimberly Bennett and I'm a seal biologist and today in your ocean science classroom Amber has asked me to talk to you about seals and seals happens to be my favourite subject so let's get started. We're going to explore the answers to these questions. What is a seal? Where do they live? How do they catch their dinner? What can we tell about a seal from its poem? Do seals have families, make friends, and play with each other? What's the biggest, the fastest, and the deepest diving seal? And are they scary? So let's jump in. Seals are mammals, just like we are. And that means that they're able to make their own body heat to stay warm. They have fur that helps them to keep that heat inside. They breathe air even though they live in the sea for most of the time. They have a backbone, so they have a spine just like we do. And females give birth to live young and feed those babies on milk. Seals belong to a group of mammals called the carnivores, and that means that they've got big teeth that help them to be able to catch their prey. And the carnivores that we're most familiar with are things like dogs and cats. But the animals that are a bit more closely related to seals include things like bears and otters. Seals belong to a group of carnivores called the pinnipeds, which means wing-footed animals. All of those animals look quite similar. So they include the sea lion in the middle, which is balancing a ball on its nose. The fur seal on the right-hand side, perched itself upon a log, the walrus with its big tusks down at the bottom, and the true seal, or a fossil seal, at the top left. All of these animals live in the sea for most of their lives, and that means they've got to be really streamlined as they move through the water, and that means that they've got that very distinctive body shape, and that they have flippers instead of arms and legs. They all keep warm to some extent using fur, but the fur seals have got the most fur and the walrus almost has none at all. It just has bristles really over its body. The walrus and the true seal also have a very thick layer of fat underneath their skin, which helps them to stay warm in the cold water. So they've all got this similarity but if you look closely you'll see that there are some differences so first of all let's look at the sea lion and the fur seal they have got these really big long front flippers those front flippers are used to swim through the water so they're swimming using their front end a bit like you doing front crawl but they're moving more from side to side their back flippers they can twist underneath their body that allows them to run on all fours when they're on the land. The walrus can do that as well, but the fossil seal, the true seal, can't do that. Instead, she uses her hind flippers, her back flippers, to swim through the water, swaying from side to side. And her front flippers are just used to stabilize and change direction. So she uses her front flippers as a rudder. You'll also see that the fur seal and the sea lion, if you look closely, have got little ear flaps. But if you look at the true seal, you can't see any ear flaps at all. They don't have those ear flaps. It doesn't mean that they can't hear. They still have ears. It's just that they don't have anything on the sides of their head that show where those ears are. So seals live in the sea, but that's a really hard environment for a mammal to live in. We've already talked about how they have to have extra ways to stay warm. If you or I went swimming in the North Sea, even in the summertime, we'd get cold really, really quickly. But seals stay in the water for days at a time, and so they can't afford to get cold. So we know that they have fur, and they also have blubber which is the thick layer of fat underneath the skin to stay warm. Another challenge that they face is that they are air breathers, but they're trying to catch fish under the water. 
And so that means that they have to be able to take a breath at the surface and then make that breath last a long time in order to be able to catch fish. Grey seals and harbour seals that live in this country are often diving down to 100 or 200 metres under the water. And that takes time. If you dive to 100 metres, it'd take you a long time to get there and a long time to get back. And you might have run out of breath by the time you get back to the surface. Seals can't afford to do that. So they have to have adaptations that allow them to hold the breath for a long time. They also need to be able to see in the dark and gloomy conditions underneath the water because light doesn't penetrate very far down in the water. They have to be able to find their way around. They also have to be able to deal with big pressure changes as they dive down in the water and, and come back to the surface. So it's quite a hard life for this air breathing mammal. Seals don't only live in the sea. You're actually much more likely to see them when they come out onto the land. So throughout the year, seals go out to sea on foraging trips and then they come back to land, maybe on sandbanks or on little rocky crags in the water and they will rest while the tide is out. So that's the most likely time that you'll see them. But there are other times of year when they like to spend a lot of time on land. The other time of year that they like to come ashore is during the molt, which is when they have to replace their fur. So they replenish their fur every year. And then every year they also come ashore to have their pups and to mate. And that's called the breeding season. But when they're on the land, that means that they can't be also eating any food because their food is fish in the sea. So they have to have special adaptations that allow them to stay on land for a long period of time. And that's where having a really nice big fat reserve helps them. They can last for a long time just using the fat reserves. That's also important for them to stay warm. So now we know that seals spend most of their time in the sea, but they do spend some of their time on land. But where in the world do they live? So if we start with, if we think about all the pinnipeds and we start with the walruses, the walruses live right um, near the North Pole. They live around the Arctic regions. So they're very northern species. The sea lions and the fur seals tend to live in the Pacific Ocean. So we don't get them in this country. And some of them live um, in the Southern Ocean too. Seals, the true seals live in the Atlantic Ocean, and that's the type of animal that we have in this country. So there are two different types of seals that live in the UK, grey seals and harbour seals. So let's start with the grey seals. Grey seals are much bigger than harbour seals. The females are about 1.8 to 2 metres long and they can weigh between 150 to 180 kilos when they're adults. Sometimes they weigh even more than that. So a very big animal. Um, the males are even bigger and can weigh up to 250 kilos when they're adults. But they don't start off that big. So when a grey seal pup is born, it only weighs about 12 kilograms and it very quickly gets very very fat and puts on lots and lots of weight um, but it has to take um, up to about six years of growing before it becomes an adult and the males because they've got much more growing to do and they've got to get very big and strong to be able to fight other males it takes about 10 years before they become adults Harbour seals, on the other hand, are much smaller. So the adult males are about 80 kilos. So that's quite little compared to a grey seal. And they're much more speckly and their faces are a little bit prettier than a grey seal. So common seals look a little bit more like a dog. Now I just called it a common seal there. That's because there's another name for harbour seals. They're also called common seals. And the reason that they're called common seals is because they live in lots of different places around the world. But in the UK, they're nowhere near as common as the grey seal. So if we compare their population sizes, grey seals have about 125,000 individuals living 
here at the moment and harbour seals there are only about 35,000 of them so they're actually less common So we know that seals live in the sea, but if we want to know more about what they're doing when, when they're in the water, we have to use special tracking technology because seals spend 90% of their time at sea under the water. And that means even if we were in a boat, we probably wouldn't see them and we wouldn't be able to work out what they were up to when they're in the water. So we use special tracking technology that uses mobile phones. Every time the seal dives, the tag, is able to record how long it dived for and how deep it dived. And then when the seal comes up to the surface, it's able to collect information about where the seal is. And all of that information gets sent by a mobile phone mast to the scientists. And then we can build up a picture, like this one on the right hand side, of where the seals go and what they're doing when they're in the water. So seals are in the water because they want to catch their dinner. And the dinner that seals like to catch is fish. And so how do they do that? How do they find their way around? So the first thing to remember is that although seals are quite closely related to dogs and to wolves and to cats, if they're under the water, they need to close their noses up so they're able to shut their nostrils to prevent water from getting in. So unlike a dog or a cat or a wolf, they're not really able to use their sense of smell very much when they're in the water. That means they've got to rely on their other senses. It's also really dark underwater. As soon as you go a few metres down in the water, you realise the light gets very, very blue, and the deeper you go, the darker it gets. And so for seals, which are often feeding right on the seabed, sometimes 100 metres or more under the water, that means it's almost pitch black down there. And that means they've got to have really good hearing, and they also, more importantly, have got to have really good eyesight and eyes that are very, very sensitive to low light. So a little bit like um, cats. If you, if you go past a cat um, in your car and the headlights catch on their eyes at night, you see their, their eyes kind of glow back at you. And that special reflective layer at the back of their eyes actually helps them to gather as much light as possible even when it's very dark and seals have exactly the same thing at the back of their eyes so they have big eyes to collect as much light as possible and they have a special reflective layer at the back to help collect the light as it bounces back and then finally it just gets too dark sometimes under the water so they have to have another backup system and actually seals have really really sensitive whiskers so that they can track fish swimming in the water 100 meters away and still catch them so what do seals like to eat well we know they spend so much time in the water because they eat fish but what sort of fish do they want to eat in particular they like to eat a type of small fish called a sand eel that lives in the sand on the seabed but how do we know that and how much fish of the different types that they like to eat do they actually take this is where the poo comes in so if we want to find out what seals have eaten we need to collect a whole lot of their poo the way you pick up a seal poo is just the same as if you're picking up a dog poo you need a bag you wear gloves and you scoop up the poo into the bag that makes it sound all quite easy, but we need to collect a lot of them. And sometimes they're really difficult to get to places. So sometimes we need to take a boat and sometimes we need to take a helicopter just to collect the poo samples. We then bring them back to the lab. And the first thing we need to do is actually get rid of the poo itself because we're not interested in the sticky gooey part of the poo. What we want to look at are the bones that are left behind that the seal hasn't managed to digest. So we put the poo into a bag in the washing machine and put it through a wash cycle. And that washes away all the pieces of organic poo. And what we're left with are just the bones of the fish. And then we can sort through those bones. And the ones that we're particularly interested in are the fish's ear bones. They're called otoliths. And those ear bones are very distinctive 
between the different types of fish. So each type of fish can be told apart from all the others based on what shape and size their otoliths are. So those are the bits that are the most useful to the scientists. So the scientists will sort through the pile of bones that are left behind by each bone and pull out all the otoliths and identify what species they came from under the microscope. And then they'll also measure them, which gives them an idea about how big the fish was. And they'll also um, pair them up so we can get an idea of how many fish the seal ate. And that gives us a picture of each meal that those seals ate. But we can use the poo to find out other things too. So we can use it to find out whether the poo was done by a male or a female seal. We can use it to find out whether the seal had different diseases or parasites. We can find out whether the seal was stressed from the hormone levels we find in the poo, or if it was pregnant, if it was a female. We can also use it to find out what sorts of nasty chemicals the seal might have accidentally been exposed to that might come from natural sources like blue-green algae or from human sources, things like microplastics. So actually the poo is really useful stuff. Let's talk now about whether seals have families and make friends with each other and play. You already know that seals come ashore in groups to breed and to haul out and to rest. So you can see on the left hand side, there's a whole load of female grey seals hanging out together because they're going to all have a pup. And on the right hand side is a picture of elephant seals all piled up on top of each other because they're molting off their fur. And when seals are on land, they do an awful lot of sleeping. Not sleeping, they can be really, really grumpy with each other. And these photos all show female and male grey seals shouting at each other and having a bit of a scrap. And they do this on a really regular basis. So I'm not sure whether you'd really count this as being friends with each other. One of the reasons that the female grey seals are being really grumpy is because they're trying to protect their pup. So female grey seals and common seals only have one pup every year and they're very protective of those pups. So once the mother seal has come ashore and had a pup, she feeds that pup on milk to get them really, really fat. But for a grey seal, that period of time where the mum is feeding the pup only lasts about 18 days. So she has to make sure that she feeds it as much as she possibly can in that short period of time. During that time, she will make sure that the pup is safe from other females getting too close, which might bite the pup, and also safe from males that might not notice that the pup is there when they're having a fight with another male. And if the female does a good job, then she'll end up producing a really nice, fat, round pup like you can see on the right-hand side of the picture here. So while the females are hard at work feeding the pups, the males don't do an awful lot. And their job is to guard a female until she's ready to mate. But he doesn't really get involved in making sure the pup is well fed or healthy. He's just there to mate with the female. So although the males do a lot of sleeping while they're waiting for the female to pay them some attention, Every now and then, they'll have a big old fight with another male that's got a little bit too close, and one of them will end up having to run away to avoid being hurt too badly. So the female seals put a lot of time and energy into making sure their pups are nice and big and fat, but eventually, after about 18 days, the female just gets too skinny, and she ends up leaving the pup and going out to sea to feed for herself. And that, as far as we know, is the last time the mum and the pup ever see each other ever again. Now that sounds to a human really sad, but actually the pups are absolutely fine. And what they do is they move away from the main part of where the other breeding adults are, and they move to a place that's kind of safer, and they end up hanging around together. And the pup will hang around on the breeding colony until it is ready to go to sea which might be nine days later, 10 days later, 
some pups hang around on the colony for up to 40 days before they're finally ready to go off to sea and then they've got to learn how to feed for themselves. When it comes to playing, we know that seals, when they are pups, certainly explore their environment a lot. Here we can see some pictures of seal pups playing with some grass and with a feather, rolling around in some weed in a pond, having a good sniff at their friends nearby, and maybe exploring down a rabbit hole to see what's there. There's even some footage showing seal pups rolling snowballs when it's snowed on the breeding colony. So these are all examples of them exploring their environment, but they don't really play like human children do, using their imagination and playing together. We also know from divers that older seals explore their environment a lot, and they'll often interact with the divers, pulling on their flippers and uh, using their teeth and their claws to see if they can pull at the dive mask or um, the wetsuit that the, that the diver's wearing. So I think divers have lots of experience of um, seals that appear to be playing. So what about the cool stuff that seals can do? Well, the biggest seals on the planet are these elephant seals, in particular southern elephant seals that can weigh more than a couple of tons when they're adults. They're also the ones that are able to dive the deepest down to about two kilometers depth and they can hold their breath for up to two hours. For humans, even two minutes is a challenge. And we know that they can swim up to 18 miles per hour if they really need to. So I think that the scariest kind of seal is a leopard seal, which is the top seal in this picture. Leopard seals live in Antarctica and they can move really fast over ice as well as in the water where they can swim really fast and they eat penguins and other seals and that means that if people are in the water diving in that part of the world then they might be at risk of being mistaken for food by a leopard seal but seals don't deliberately kill and hurt people they do get scared by people though and their way of defending themselves is to open their mouth and to hiss and if that doesn't work then they will bite and they've got very very big teeth and they've got very very strong jaws so even a seal pup can break your finger and even if the bite isn't so bad and isn't so deep seals don't clean their teeth and they've got lots of really nasty bacteria in their mouths so they can give you a really nasty infection from bites and scratches so the best thing to do is to keep your distance so that you don't scare the seal and so that it doesn't have a chance to give you a nip. Well, I hope you've enjoyed finding out all about seals and now it's time for you to ask any questions. Okay, so let me just open my Zoom again and stop the screen share. Okay, let's get this all set up again. So that was an amazing uh, presentation from Dr. Bennett there. That was awesome. And we are very lucky that she has managed to make it on to do a live question and answer session. So can everyone hear me okay right now? Can I get thumbs up on the camera? Okay, we're good. So what I'm gonna do is hand over now, I'm going to unmute Kimberly Bennett because obviously that would be very silly if she couldn't answer questions. So Kim, can we, can we check you can hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear, can you hear me? We can hear you, perfect. Okay. So now what we do is we pass over to you if that's okay. Um, and everyone, remember this is the time where you can put your hand up with the three little buttons at the bottom and there'll be a little blue hand, it will say raise your hand and if you put it up, then you can ask a question live, um, out loud. If you are a bit shy, um, or you don't have your audio visual stuff on, then you can type it where there's a little speech bubble at the bottom, and you can type us a question. So I can see we've got our first hand up. Um, Amelia, you had your hand up first, so I'm gonna unmute you now, and you can uh, ask your first question to Dr. Bennett. 
um, does some baby seals never see the mummies? Um, again, like the turtles. Yeah. So for a lot of um seals, the mummy just leaves them on the beach when she's finished feeding them, and then. We don't think they ever meet up again, ever again in their lives. Now, it might be that when they're older, they happen to run into each other, but it's not like they um, do like humans do, where they would, you know, call in for their, for their tea on a Sunday or something like that. They don't, they don't do those sorts of things. Thank you. Okay, cool. I will put your hand down now. So thank you very much. Remember, you can ask another one later if you want to. I know you like to ask lots of questions. Um, so next up in the order, we had Ethan who'd like to ask a question. So I'll unmute you now, Ethan. Will I want to ask a question too, but here's my question. What is the deepest diving seal? Ooh. What is the deepest diving seal? Um, so the deepest diving seal is, is the ones that I showed quite close to the end in that presentation called a southern elephant seal. They're the biggest, and that means that they can hold their breath for a really long time. And that means then they can dive for a really long time. So we know that they can hold their breath for about two hours if they really need to. But if they're normal dives, if they're just, you know, pop into, effectively pop into the shops to pick up some fish, if they're doing that, then um, they dive for about 30 minutes to 40 minutes. So even their normal dives are really, really long and really deep. <laughs> There you go. I think you said Willow had a question as well, doesn't she? Yeah. Um, out of all the different seals, which are the ones that live the longest? Yeah, that's a tough question. Most seals, probably elephant seals again. I don't know whether there are longer lived ones, but for example, the grey seals that we have in this country can live to be about 40. So they're quite long lived for a, for a mammal. Wow. Males, males don't live that long though. Males usually sort of get tired really quickly and, and die younger, but the females can live a long time. Okay. Oh, well, I'm going to um, put your hands down now, guys, but feel free to ask another question later. Don't worry about it, but thank you for such great questions. Okay, next up we have um, Daisy, I think, has got a question um, with her mum, Carly. So I'll unmute you guys now. Okay, we've got two little seals to show you as well. Look. Oh, lovely. <laughs> They've got big eyes, which is yeah. pretty accurate. And had a white one. <laughs> um, so our question was, how old are the seals when the mums leave them on the beach? Okay, so this is for grey seals. So all seal species are a little bit different from each other. But for grey seals, they're only about 18 days old. Oh, gosh. Yeah, That's so they don't have very long with their mum before they get no. left on their own. Um, elephant seals, uh, it's maybe a month to six weeks. Um, and then things like harp seals and hooded seals have the shortest amount of time before they, they get left on their own on the ice. And that's about four days at the shortest. Oh my gosh, four so, days and on their own. Yeah, four days to a week. Wow. Poor little seals. But yeah. they're fine. They're fine. Get on, don't they? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Okay, so I've got a question linked to that. So if they, um, you know, if they're going off on their own after like 18 days or something, is it common in across species that they might come back to the same beach or the same area? Or do they look for new places to, to go and live on their own? So it's an interesting question because we, up until recently, haven't had a lot of information about that. Mm -hmm because to find out the answer to that question, you really need to track the seal. And to be able to track the seal, you have to try to make the device small enough to attach to a, a baby seal, never mind an adult. Um, but the information that we've got now shows that, at least for grey seals, they travel a really long way away from the place that they were born. Um, and I, some of the tracking data that I collected when I was doing my PhD um, showed that some of them were swimming as far away as Denmark. Some of them were swimming um, much further north up to Shet Shetland and Orkney. And we even had one that traveled to Norway twice in the first year of its life. So the first year of life for a gray seal pup is a time of real exploration. And they can really get all over the place, all over the North Sea. 
and that seems to be true of, of lots of other seal species but then when they become adults they become much more boring and routine in what they do and they get used to where are the good spots to fish and where are the good spots to haul out and rest and so then they end up doing very predictable things but when they're babies and, and juveniles the, and teenagers they they don't do predictable things at all that's really cool thanks for asking answering that so um on a similar question to what we had earlier you know when you said that some seals live up to 40 years um is we've had a question from anique and her children um is it is that the typical life across all, all seals and things like that or, or does it vary quite a lot? It varies, it does vary quite a lot and I think the a lot of seals will die before they become adults so a typical lifespan is probably not very long because you get quite a lot of um, seal pups dying from infection or from starvation when they're very little before they've even weaned from mum and then that, that first year of life where they're learning how to feed for themselves and learning where the good places to go and forage are and you know avoiding things like fishing nets and avoiding things like uh, lobster creels um, they've got to learn how to do that um, and so the first few years of life is pretty risky but once they've reached adulthood they they've kind of gone through the dangerous part of their lives and um, in this country there aren't many predators in fact there aren't any real predators of, of seals unless you get an occasional killer whale coming through so it, once they've hit adulthood they're, they're pretty tough for a long time um, and that that's also true for other seal species cool thank you so just so you know when you said about how far seals go you had a lot of shocked faces on videos and we've had messages in the chat saying it's unbelievable so that has blown their minds um, <laughs> So, so yeah, that's really good. And obviously they think it's sad that they have such a tough time as well um, in early life. But for those that make it, that's why it's super special if we all get to see a seal in, in you know, in real life as well. Yeah. So I'm going to ask one more question from the chat and then we've got three people with their hands up as well. Okay. <laughs> so told you they like to ask lots of questions. So Great. we've got um, Pippa who would like to know how long do they need to hold their breath for? So that depends on the species um, and for grey seals and for harbour seals their normal dives are usually about two minutes up to about six minutes long so their normal dives aren't really that long but if you tried to hold your breath for six minutes you'd probably faint. I don't recommend anybody does that tries to do that. Um, so the, the normal dives are quite short for the seals that we have in this country but like I said earlier elephant seals can no, their normal dives are like half an hour long because they're so much bigger and they can hold their breath for longer um, and if a grey seal or a harbour seal really needs to if, for example it's got really scared and it doesn't want to come to the surface then they can hold their breath for about half an hour but that's their maximum but a southern elephant seal can hold their breath for two hours so it's that's size awesome. dependent <laughs> I, I, can, I can never get over that when I hear how mammals can do that. Thinking about, you know, how closely related they are, like you say, to cats and dogs and, and wolves and things. It's just amazing that they do that. So, OK, we've got some more people with their hands up now. So next up, um, it's called Lucy's iPhone. I don't know if Lucy is the parent or the child, but I will unmute you now. OK, feel free to ask your question. Oh, I don't think your audio is on. Um, so I'll give you a couple of seconds in case you need the audio to come on. In the bottom left hand corner, there should be a little microphone and it'll probably have a line through it if it's muted. If you can't get it to work, please feel free to type it in the chat. There's a little speech bubble at the bottom. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to work that out. We've got some other hands up as well, so don't worry. But yeah, if you can't, if you can't get it through on the audio, feel free to just type it and we'll ask a question to Dr. Bennett for you, all right? Okay, so next up we've got, um, Amelia's got another question. Okay. Off you go, Amelia. Um, seals. Um, trapped in some submarines when um, the hatch is open and they fall into the water. Like I, the submarines into the water. 
So I um, think your, your audio went a little bit funny. Are you asking, would they go in a submarine if they could get in? No, like, um, did they get trapped, their tail get trapped underwater and under um, they might die. Ah. Yeah, so, so they're probably not likely to... Um, we don't really know how they interact with things like submarines, but we do know that they interact with fishing boats because the fishing nets catch the fish that they like to eat. So they're often, you, you can uh, maybe go on um, YouTube later and see if you can find a video of um, seals taking fish out of trawls. And that's where they do, they are in danger of getting stuck. So if they get caught in the net for any reason, because they're air breathers, if they're held underwater, the same as any other mammal, they will not be able to breathe and it will kill them. But I think the, um, they're unlikely to interact with submarines because the noise, they'll stay away from the noise that the submarine is making. Um, but they, and there's nothing about the submarine that will attract them to come and explore. But fishing boats are definitely interesting because they're pulling all those tasty fish all together in one place. Um, but because seals are really good at holding their breath, they don't usually drown underwater, which is when your lungs would fill with water because they don't take a breath. What will happen is that they'll suffocate. So they just simply won't ever breathe again if they can't come to the surface. But it's not a nice way to die. Um, it's a horrible thing to happen. So we try to make sure that fishing boats have got mechanisms in place if they can to stop seals getting in and so that seals can escape if they do happen to get into the nets so it's to try to protect the seals does that answer your question <laughs> yeah okay. um i've got another question too okay. um, <laughs> um seals get wrapped up by seaweed when um the seaweed from the kelp forest up when um, it come to me. So I think again your audio is a little bit funny but did you ask uh, do they get caught in the seaweed? Yes um, when um, the seaweed has come loose. So seals are quite good they actually quite like to rest in kelp beds um, and stay out of the way and hide in kelp beds they're very used to being around seaweed and the seaweed isn't so strong. Seals are very, very strong and they can do a lot of damage to, to fishing nets even when they get caught in them. So the chances are that for most seaweed, they would, it might get wrapped around them temporarily, but they'd be able to pull themselves loose. It's not as tough as fishing nets. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Amelia. Okay. So I can see it says that um, Lucy, um, that the um, audio should now be working. So I will give it one more go. And if not, just send the uh, send it in the chat and we'll answer your question. Cool, it's time to answer your question now. Oh, yeah, well, you're asking. <laughs> we can hear you. Do, what do you want to ask? Uh, oh, my God. Why do ants give me like seals? <laughs> why do I like seals, Michael? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a really good question. So I like seals because I think they can do really unusual things that human beings can't do. So one of the things we just talked about was that they can hold their breath for such a long time. And I find that really fascinating that they're able to do that. And they're also able to stay on land for a really long period of time without eating or drinking anything. And if we did that, if we tried to not have not have our lunch and our dinner for days and days at a time we'd be really hungry and really grumpy and then eventually we might start to starve to death and seals don't starve unless they've had no food for maybe maybe two months or longer so they're really tough wow. animals yeah it's pretty impressive <laughs> but that's why i like Thank seals you. because i think they're fascinating answer your question yeah, thank yeah. you. So long and short of it is because seals are awesome. They're amazing, they're yeah. In every single way, basically. Mm, um, they're talking a bit longer. I know they joined you, joined in, didn't you? Okay, thank you so much for your question. That was a fab question. So I've got um, a quick question in the chat now for you. Um, when do baby walruses get their tusks? And that's from Daisy. Hi, Daisy. So, um, I don't know as much about walruses as I know about, about other types of pinnipeds, but I understand that walruses 
start to develop their tusks from being about six months old. So that's when, you know, when babies are teething and their gums start to hurt. So that's when they're about six months old. Because if they develop them any earlier than that, it would probably get in the way of them being able to feed from their mum because they're still suckling. Um, so from about six months, they start to break their teeth. And then you really would start to notice them when they're about 14 months old. So just about a year, a year and a half old when they start to need to use them. Well, there we go. It's good to know that they're not tusks all in the way for the poor. Yeah, that would be messy, wouldn't it? Lesser, yeah. Thank you for your question, Daisy. Okay, just so we all know, we only have one question left on the chat with a hand up, and that's Ethan. So I'm going to let you ask your question, Ethan. If anyone has a question they want to ask, you've got about one minute while Dr. Bennett answers Ethan's question to type it or put your hand up, and then we're going to wrap up and give Dr. Bennett a really, really massive thank you. Okay, so off you go, Ethan. Um, I have two questions, but what is the fastest seal? Ooh. Ooh, what is the fastest seal? I don't know whether I know the answer to that question, but my guess would be it's a leopard seal because they are so... Um, they've got to be able to catch penguins which are fast in the water and they've got to be able to catch other other um, other seals too so my, that would be my guess is a leopard seal but maybe you can find out and tell me tell me if i'm right that's what we'll do if you guys find that out um you can post it on the facebook page and let me know and then i promise if you find the right answer i will post i will find the coolest video i can find of that seal <laughs> Here's my second question. Okay. Are elephant seals born with their trunks, trunk like mouth, or do they, does it grow? So that's um, that's something that grows as they get older. So when they're little, um, they've got a much flatter nose, a bit like the the on the presentation there was a picture down on the right hand side they've got sort of quite a flat nose and then once they start to go through puberty that's when the males develop that big trunk uh, the females don't develop it it's just something that, the, that happens to the males the females have got a prettier face than the males do <laughs> is that how you tell the difference between male and female yeah and the size is hugely different so the males are maybe two tons in weight and they're enormous and when they rear up on their on their belly to fight each other they're more than six feet tall so they're they're big and they're scary whereas the females are only about 700 or 800 kilos so there's a big big size difference between the males and females so they're pretty easy as adults to tell apart it's just the babies that you can't easily tell apart Oh, thank you. Thanks for your question as well, Ethan. Okay, so we have had one final question come through on the chat that we will end on now. And it says, okay. and it says, how small are seal pups? How small are seal pups? Well, that, again, it depends on the species. In this country, harbour seal pups are much smaller than grey seal pups are. So they're maybe five or six kilos when they're born, uh, oh. whereas a grey seal's bigger i might be overestimating actually um but i'm trying to think if there's smaller that things like fur seals and um sea lions will be much smaller than that so gray seal is quite a, quite chunky when it's born compared to uh, some of these other smaller species yeah i was going to say i've seen seal pups before and some of my friends definitely mistook them for adults because they can one of them was kind of like flopping over to them um and running and they were like oh it's a seal and then obviously we we took the mickey out of them a little bit because we were like, I mean, it was only a baby seal. And <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, right. So thank you so much, everyone. We're going to have to wrap up there. But first of all, what I'm going to do is like we always do, I'm going to unmute you all and we're all going to say thank you so much to Dr. Bennett. And I will just unmute you again, uh, Kimberly. There you go. Uh, there we Bye go. Me. Okay, and yeah, that's quite overwhelming, isn't it? Lots of thank yous. There's a lot more people on this than you realise because not everyone's got their videos on and that as well. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah, and I want to say thank you so much. I learned loads about seals and I really enjoyed it. And I also want to say thank you to everyone who joined. As usual, you did not disappoint me with your fabulous, fabulous questions. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything to wrap up, um, Dr. Bennett? No, it's just really nice to have a chance to chat to 
by lots of people who are really interested in the same subject that I'm interested in. So, and thank you for all your questions and being interested. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. And just so you all know, as usual, this will be coming back next week. Um, next week, it will be uh, me giving the session again. So I haven't done one in about seven weeks, I think we've been doing it now. So I'm going to give a session next week because um, it's going to be about, so I told you first of all in the first bit that I study the deep sea. So I did a very broad um, session about the deep sea. Well, what I'm going to do is talk about something I specifically research um, for my work at the moment, which is deep sea hydrothermal vents. So there are these big chimneys under the sea that spout out water that can be like 450 degrees centigrade and they can be like five kilometers below the deep in, in the deep ocean. And as we know from the first session, that's where it's completely dark. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about the hydrothermal vents, these big underwater chimneys and the animals that live at them. So because, yes, there are animals that live next to an area that has water that's like 450 degrees centigrade coming out. So you seem to like that, so that's good. And then I know that you've also asked me if I can get you a speaker about sharks, so I'm on the case. And I know you also wanted a speaker, very randomly, but I love it, about sea cucumbers. <laughs> I know, amazing, isn't it? So I'm hoping, I've got a friend who helped um, set up, yeah, this is gonna blow your mind, a sea cucumber farm in Madagascar. Um, so I'm hoping she might, yeah, I know, I can see your faces looking at me like I'm crazy, but I'm hoping that she can come along and maybe talk to you about that. If not, then there's a lot of people that love sea cucumbers. And I know you also spoke to me about somebody coming and talking about nudibranchs, these amazing sea slugs that have all these cool little bits all over them that make them all frilly and jazzy. So I am on the case. Um, I will find these people for you. And thank you so much for being so involved in helping me choose subjects as well and showing me that you're super keen and interested. So I will wrap up now. I will see you the same time next week. And thank you so much to Dr. Bennett. And if you've got any questions that you um, think of through the week, drop them on the Facebook page and we will get back to you. But yeah, I'm gonna wave now and say bye. And I'll see you soon.